Here, the spacer goes in just like this, placing your two sensor ports right here hidden on the back where the wires can be hidden in the fuel injection loom. It's the wire loom that houses the wires for the coil packs and the fuel injectors. So it's a really nice, neat, hidden application for your wires. Alright, welcome back to the DIY Hemi channel. Today we're going to cover the engine coolant temperature sensor as well as electronic fan controllers. Um, if you come on over, I'll get Mike to walk on over. This is something that you typically saw with uh, earlier Gen 3 Hemi swaps. There really wasn't a great place to put a sensor for your engine coolant gauge uh, as well as electronic fan switch. So what you typically have is a spliced upper radiator hose with some sort of a, a barbed piece that has the sensors installed in it. Uh, this is, it was great back in the day when they didn't really have any options out there, but there are two major pitfalls to this. One is, it's not very aesthetically pleasing. It's just kind of all hanging out here. Doesn't really look great. Two, and perhaps the most important one, is the position of the engine coolant temperature temperature sensor in relation to the thermostat. So the thermostat is down here in the timing cover of the engine. So it sits just below the air compressor on the trucks. Now when you have the sensors here, they are outside of the thermostat. So if the thermostat is in the closed position, if the engine is not warm yet, or perhaps a failed thermostat, the thermostat has broken and it's not opening properly, you're not going to get an accurate temperature with the sensor being on the discharge side of the thermostat. It just doesn't work really well. So we came up with a solution and it's the dual threat thermostat spacer. So what this spacer does is it takes the thermostat out of the timing cover, spaces it up one inch, and gives you two 1 8 NPT ports below the thermostat, placing the sensors directly in the fluid stream so it's getting an accurate temperature no matter what range the engine is in. So if it's still in warm up mode, the thermostat has not opened, or if the thermostat has failed, you're still going to get an accurate temperature reading when it comes to your gauges. Another thing is, it now takes all this wiring mess from up above and draped all over this assembly, and it tucks them into a very nice setup. So this, when it's installed down here, will route the sensors out the back and very well hidden as opposed to kind of what we have right here. It's even better in an application of a car engine. So over here we have the engine out of our 2006 Jeep Commander. Um, it really is just like the car engine with the exception of the oil pan. It uses the same intake manifold, the same timing arrangement, the same accessory drives. You'll notice that the thermostat and the water neck is on the passenger side on this engine. Here, the spacer goes in just like this, placing your two sensor ports right here hidden on the back where the wires can be hidden in the fuel injection loom. It's the wire loom that houses the wires for the coil packs and the fuel injectors. So it's a really nice, neat, hidden application for your wires. All right, quick overview. We've already discussed this piece. We use a Viton standard series O-ring. So it's not some custom O-ring that uh, it's impossible to find. This is an off-the-shelf unit. It's Viton, which means it is chemically resistant to all automotive fluids. You don't have to worry about it degrading over time. It's uh, one of the best O-rings that you can physically get. It fits in this O-ring gland, and then this simply bolts in place of the existing water net. So now we're going to go ahead and get to the installation. First thing we like to do is place a little bit of white lithium grease in the o-ring just because we don't want any cuts or pinches of the o-ring we want it to be really nice when we install it so I'll put a little bit on here and run it around the entire o-ring just to keep it from getting pinched that was the main thing that we look at here I'll go ahead roll it around the register 
and just press it down into the o-ring gland. There we are. So, beautiful thing about this is there are no cork gaskets, there's no RTV needed for this installation. It's pretty much a bolt-in at this point. O-ring is in, we're ready to bolt it in. Some people would like to put their sensors in on the engine, some off. I prefer off, it's not a big deal. One thing to note here is these surfaces right here around the o-ring are machined so while the entire body is anodized aluminum this area is not anodized and that is because anodization uh, prohibits electrical conductivity and your sensors won't read correctly so with this area being machined if you do paint this maybe to match your engine or something like that make sure you do not paint this surface because it needs that electrical conductivity for your gauge to work properly same thing goes with the tapped threads in here. When you thread in your gauge into the port, you'll want to put some Teflon tape or sealant on here, but make sure you have a portion of your threads that are not taped so you have a good conductive path going down so this really grounds out. With the sensor in there, you can see it's placing the tip of the sensor in the fluid stream. That's exactly what you want for this type of setup. Let's go ahead and start taking this thing apart. I'm going to undo one of the gazillion hose clamps on this thing. And another. <laughs> this looks like a high school science project. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. But <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Mr. Pete. Sorry, uh, we don't mean to criticize, but it is kind of ugly. We've all been there. Yeah, we've all been there. All right. See, this is going to make a big mess. Is it? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Should we though. drain it? No. Uh, I don't want to drain all the fluid. Probably better. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get some uh, channel locks on that. All right. With this upper spliced radiator hose out of the way, we're going to go ahead and get down to the thermostat housing and install the new spacer. So let's take the belt off. I hope if I did it the right way. All right, that's off and out the way. We'll slide the upper radiator hose, what's left of it, off. Note to self, always leave your power steering cap on. That would, have, that would have been, that would have sucked. Yeah. Alright. So, upper thermostat housing is off. Notice it's just the same as the cars. Nothing different there. And we're going to go ahead and pull the thermostat out. Uh -huh. Watch out. No yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> Good wipe. Alright, ready? Ready. Let the blood out. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Let me get that in slow mo. Oh, yeah. Notice the thermostat has a built-in gasket or o-ring and it seals on both sides of the stamp steel blade that houses the base of the thermostat. So that's what's really important. And the dual threat spacer, it has the same register built in so that the factory sensor fits right in. Okay and forms a proper seal. So it has the right seal engagement 
so when you actually bolt it down and tighten it down it does well. When you do the installation note that the orientation of the two sensors has to fit between the two uprights of the sensor. So in other words if you had your two sensors in like this physically it won't fit this way because the sensor hits this edge so you need to make sure it's perpendicular. Here's the sensor the two uprights go here and here like this just like that. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So we'll put some. Yep. We'll put some. <laughs> we'll put some tape on this, you guys, and cut back in just a second. Don't worry, Mr. Pete. Still good. <laughs>